So you want to turn yourself into an illustrated logo design. Well, it's not as hard as you might think, and I am going to show you how to do it. Come on. Before we go any further with the video, let me address something. Yes, I have a lot less hair than I did in my last video. And no, cutting your own hair isn't as easy as all the YouTube tutorials make it out to be. But at least I have my Bob Ross wig to tide me over until it grows back. Springy. So why would you want to use yourself as a logo? Well, for an example, something I've mentioned I do before is stream on Twitch. And I wanted a icon, I wanted a logo that represented me as a person, but also what I could do for people. So I turned myself into an avatar emblem and I use this across all of my socials. I've actually just recently updated it. So if it's something you want to do in terms of creating an icon that visually represents you that can spam across, uh, that can spam? No, span across all of your socials, then this is probably for you. Who doesn't want an emblem of their self? Regardless, guys, whatever you want to use it for, let's get started and let's jump on the computer. We're going to want to get some reference photographs of ourselves. These can be as silly or serious as you want, uh, but you're going to be tracing over it so that you can later put it into Illustrator uh, to vectorize into a logo. When you've got your photos, grab your sketchbooks or pads or whatever you want to use. I'm going to use an iPad. I'm going to take the photo into Procreate and I'm going to paste it in, reduce the opacity of the photo, create a new layer above, and with a pencil tool, I'm just going to start outlining uh, the photo. It's the easiest way to sort of get that initial shape in and the initial design in. You can make tweaks a little bit later. Once you have the base um, details in, you can increase the size of the eyes, for example, if you're going for that look. Uh, you can add sort of stylistic line work in here and there if you want to. Um, again, utilize your style, but ultimately what you want is a nice base layer for the line work that is so that you can trace over it with uh, paths in Illustrator. So once we have the illustr the sketch down, we will take it into Illustrator. You can see here, I have a few brand graphics I've already created for Deadweight Design uh, in the sort of style I like to go for. Um, this might end up a little bit different and outside of that style, but that's perfectly fine. Um, I still plan on it complementing the overall look. So I place this on the bottom layer, which is basically the, the source file layer and I reduce the opacity and then I have a layer on top of that called outlines. You want to lock any other layers you have in your document. At the moment you should only have that base layer and then outlines on top of it. Lock the base layer so you don't accidentally select it and start with the pen tool uh, putting down the, uh, the line work. So you're going to want to trace around um, around the sketch lines that you've put in. Uh, it will create variance in the width of the line and um, this is this is what we're going for. We're going for that variance as an end result. And just carry on going around everything you have sketched out. You can add later if you wish to, and I will, and you will see that happen. Also, just as a note, be sure to try and separate certain lines as well so it's not all in one so you can tweak and move things later without it being too much of a hassle. Like some of the inner detail lines I actually put in separately just so I can move them or even delete them if I feel like they don't look right. And like you'll see here, there's a separate detail line I've put in and I do actually edit that a little bit later. Uh, I'm going to cap it off at the bottom just with a straight line. But you'll see that that doesn't matter too much uh, later once we put a mask in. And now we, once we've got all of those lines in, all the black line work, we just start blocking in color. Now, so what you want to do is you want to have make sure that that color layer is below the outline layer. Uh, and then just start working your way around the, the actual lines. Uh, they should be thick enough for you to do that with ease. And just make sure you're getting the color just where you want it. So now I'm going on to the skin tone for my hand. And obviously I will put that on across my face. I'll, put, I'll make sure to block in color first before moving on to highlights. 
but you'll see uh, earlier when I said I might add some detail. This is where I do that. I decide to go back onto the outlines layer and I wanted just to create a little bit, um, a little bit more detail. And you'll see how I do that. I select the path tool, uh, the pen tool, sorry. I create a path. I give it a pointed end. Uh, I create a star and end point. And then what I do is I select the blend tool. Um, so you go up into your edit. Wait, is it edit? No, object. And then you want to select blend and then blend options. Um, you can just go straight into make blend and it might do it like, I think that's what I did. It created a smooth color. But if you want to edit the amount of um, steps that are in between the beginning and end point, then you can do so by going into blend options like I did there and just uh, altering the number of steps. So with these, with those uh, details in, I then create a shadow layer. The shadow layer is below the outlines again, but above the color. Um, I just selected the color black and I started blocking in sections where I feel like the shadow would hit um, my face uh, to start. And once I have a solid black outline, well, a solid black field layer, sorry, what you'll see is I select the opacity and I reduce the opacity and I put the blend mode to multiply. Uh, and this just helps even out the, the black and make it look a little bit not, more natural on the color it sits on. Be careful to make sure that you don't uh, overlap like the eyes, for example. But for the most part, if you want the shadow there, just put it there. Just play around, experiment and uh, see what feels right. Now I've done it for this portion of the face, uh, I will go in and I'll do it for other sections um, on the hair, on the hoodie, pretty much everywhere. But you want the face to be your main, main focal point. So I don't spend too much time creating shadows uh, on the clothing, for example, or the other items. Although I do put them in there, I spend a lot more time on the hair and the face for this. Now we're done with the shadows, you want to create another layer above the shadows or below, it doesn't really matter. You want to call it highlights. Remember to lock the other layers as you're moving along as well so you don't accidentally select the wrong one. And on this occasion, you want to select the white color. Um, start blocking in a little section. Once you've done that, you want to again reduce the opacity and this time change the blend mode to overlay. Again, it just makes it look a little bit more natural sitting on top of the color. Uh, that you're placing it on top of. And it also means that you don't have to select a different color for every section of the illustration when the color changes, that is. You can see me just playing around with the opacity there as it didn't look quite right straight away. And then I just start blocking it in where I feel like the light might hit. I mean, I'm not going for 100% realism on this, uh, but I still want it to sort of feel, uh, feel fairly natural. Once I'm done with the hair, I move on to the face and uh, I do move on to the hoodie and I do put a little bit of uh, highlight detail into the Apple Pencil, for example. Uh, but again, not too much because I really want the face uh, as it's the as it's the icon to be the main focal point. So here we go. I select everything once I've done that and I actually duplicate it. And the reason is, is it keeps all of those in their own layers. And then I select the main illustration again uh, and I group it and I place everything within a top layer called logo design. Now to mask it, I create a circle and I center it and then I fill the circle after I've positioned it above and then I select everything and select uh, clipping mask and this will mask it within a circular shape. Now you can, you'll see me here just putting a thicker outline around the, uh, the icon, the illustration. I, I felt like the icon wasn't quite thick enough so I selected everything um, copied and pasted it and uh, filled it just with black um, and uh, sent it to the back of the illustration so that it creates a thicker outline. Um, so you, I'm just comparing it to the rest of my brand assets there to make sure I feel like it's fitting in nicely. Uh, and then I create another circle just around it, around the illustration once it's clipped, just to border it and frame it so it doesn't look unnatural uh, the way it's cut off at the bottom. And I also wanted to create like a little section where the hair comes out over the top of the circle, but the body is still capped off at the bottom. 
Uh, it's like almost like a, a false element of depth to the illustration. And here you'll just see me playing around with um, some background ideas. And once that's done, I take it into Photoshop. And in Photoshop, so this is where obviously you have your scalable vector. And now if you want to tweak it, I mean, for online social media profile pictures, there's, there's no problem here. Uh, so I just wanted to add some gradients for highlights and brush in some shadows, add a little bit of texture and uh, a little bit of glow to the eyes as well. I like adding glow to my illustrations. You'll see me playing around with some uh, some lens flare tools. Couldn't think of the word then. <laughs> uh, in the end, you'll see that I actually only go for a lens flare on the edge of the circle, and I just go with a soft white brush for the glow around the eyes. Um, you'll also see me adding some shadow in to behind the illustration icon so that it appears it stood off from the actual background a little bit uh, but these are all things that um, you can play around with yourself and decide what you feel looks best for your style what you feel looks best for your uh, image and how you want to appear um, on this illustration Again, because this is in Photoshop, this is now a raster image. It's not infinitely scalable, but in honesty, it's very unlikely that for like sort of like an avatar mascot logo, you'll need it to be. I mean, it's very unlikely it's going to be at such a scale where you're going to lose quality. So as long as you design this section within a reasonable proportion, I think I set it at um, 1080 by 1080p, uh, 1080 by 1080 pixels. Basically... Um, that's that's more than large enough uh, for what I'm going to use it for anyway. And uh, most likely it's only going to be scaled down at that size and not up. playing around with shadow here just seeing what looks right i don't want it to be too harsh obviously setting the uh the blend mode to multiply reducing the opacity again and this is where i just add some texture and i don't want it to be too harsh i just want it to be subtle but i kind of uh, like the idea of just adding a little bit of texture over the illustration over the icon Guys, there you have it. That is how you turn yourself into an illustrated mascot icon. Now, I know I brushed over quite a few things quite quickly. I didn't want to go into too much detail and boyer, but the main things to remember are separate your layers, separate your outline layer from your color layer, from your highlight to your shadows. Make sure they're separated and make sure you lock your layers when you're not using them so you don't accidentally select something. You're probably going to want to be proficient in the pen tool um, you've probably gathered that by this point in the video, um, but the pen, the pen tool is pretty easy to pick up. Can't imagine you'll have too many difficulties with that. The main thing is, is just keep trying, have fun with it, play around with uh, different techniques. Uh, but the, but that is the the core way, core principles, I guess, in turning yourself into an illustrated emblem. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. As always, if you did enjoy this content or find it helpful, please do hit that subscribe button if you're not already and uh, smash the like button as well if that's what you're into. But guys, until next time, take care. <laughs>